If you had the power to make someone's day, would you do it? Like everybody has these amazing feelings of gratitude and, and happiness and everything inside of them for one another, but only a small amount ever gets expressed. Like be kind to everyone, you never know what's going on behind closed doors and it costs you nothing to be nice. G'day, g'day. Welcome back to another episode of A Lot To Talk About. It is your boy, the captain of the ship, the man in charge, Bradley J. Driver. Of course, you can call me Brad. Absolute pleasure to be here, as always, here in the, the new and improved home studio with all the fancy gear. No idea, but I'm here with two people I know plenty about. It's always fun when I get guests that I know well and have, I guess, life experience with and have shared many memories and moments with. Today's guest... There's been plenty of those. I'm going to give them the introduction that they deserve. So a newly engaged couple, um, <laughs> a shiny ring to show off at some point in the show. They are two of my best friends, two incredible human beings. They have an incredible love story, but also an incredible story of what's to come. A journey called the Project of Happiness, which is all about happiness, gratitude, and all the things that make life amazing and make, I guess, the simple things that make life amazing that are at access to us all the time. So from your home, your car, or wherever you are, give a very warm welcome to the one, the only, Zach and Stella. Thanks, mate. What an what introduction. What an intro. <laughs> you guys deserve it. So good to have you here. We've been, I feel like we've been talking about this podcast yeah. for like a year and a half. Yeah, because been so long. We've been working on the project for close to, I didn't realise it until the other day when I was chatting to um, April. Mm. Um, it's nearly been two years. Since yeah, we first, it would have been over two years since we had that walk mm. down the harbour and we were having that little chit chat discussing, I guess, potential ideas with how we can incorporate, um, you know, making people feel good and expressing gratitude and, yeah. and whatnot um, into a, I wouldn't call it a profession, but into a, a thing that's really formed as part of our lives. Definitely. Yeah. You know, it's so interesting for me whenever I sit on the potty because I like to share to start with like a bit of the origin story of where I met the guest or the guests in this occasion. So I want to quickly share it with you and then I'm going to like hand it over to you to kind of delve into it further. But as many of the listeners, viewers of this show know, maybe some of them are newcomers due to you guys, which I hope so. <laughs> and, you know, I was in real estate many years ago. So call myself a bit of a briefcase wanker no not all real estate agents are wankers <laughs> um but maybe i was and i met um a very high energy fella um by the name of zach bit off at an an auctioneer competition oh, one evening that's right. oh um I yeah didn't know this. and yeah. kind of we saw we formed a little bit of a circle of knowledge you'd call it like a table of knowledge <laughs> between a few of yeah. us young bucks in real estate yeah. and we you know we we got on and we'd speak on the phone yeah. and we'd chat but we'd never really like probably just hung out the two of us mm. and then it was you know through lockdown the first lockdown we started catching up and walking a lot in the mornings i think it was originally as well like it was one of those things that um i guess it was you me jakey mm. at the time we all um we all just caught up and it was originally to discuss you know real estate the market and how we can you know help each other and be the best versions of ourselves Definitely. and then it's slowly sort of I guess took it away from that more we just caught up for general chit chats and like yeah for sure and it just made sense and we're very similar personalities and got very similar ideas and interests and i think that made sense and then we'd started walking every morning yeah then that become like when i mean every morning i mean like seven days a week and we were walking twice a day yeah it was literally we were walking probably five and a half k's at 5 36 a.m and then another five and a half straight after work at like yeah yeah. Like we'll, we'll hit like 20,000 steps most days. Right? Most days, yeah. <laughs> and just catching up yeah. and chatting and we just, we then become best mates. Yeah. And to fast forward the story a little bit um, for the purpose of today's <laughs> interview, then he was telling me about this girl <laughs> and this girl that he, he was excited to meet and have a first <laughs> date with. And then if I'm getting the order of events right, which I'll hand it over to you guys in a second, it was um, one evening the the one the only Stella Littlemore <laughs> made an enormous trip down to the gong and oh, the next morning not... we were all sitting at Lee and me yeah. is that the next morning after the first night yeah 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 he Jeez, called me and he said hey <laughs> you've got it I've got to introduce you to Stella and there we were oh, sat at Brecky 
<laughs> yeah, getting on, and um, yeah. then you know, you two are now engaged. Yeah. yeah. So it's a later. wild story. It's yeah. a wild story. But I'm going to hand it over to you guys. I guess the first question for for me is what attracted you guys to each other in the sense of you know that first connection being so strong that yeah. now a year and a half down the track we're here. Yeah. I feel yeah, like I should have prepared myself. No. Yeah. Um. Oh, I feel like for my age, I'm probably a pretty mature mm. person, and I've always been like ready to take those next steps a lot earlier than majority of the people around my age. So to meet mm. someone who was quite on par with that and like career orientated and like, mm. like conscious of their health and all of those values that aligned quite closely to me, I was like, Oh my gosh, this person's very in line with mm. where mm. I want to be. And like, I think cause you're that bit older, you're, constantly achieving here and so it like forces me to try and achieve up yeah. here as well so yeah, it's funny um, oh geez that didn't sparkle doesn't it <laughs> um <laughs> it sounds like blinding now um it's um funny because I don't, I don't know if i told you this but like the first couple of months i think i mentioned to you um when you were basically a lot of the stuff that i used to say i found that you just started saying that in the first couple of months i'd hear yeah. you say things that i'd said and you repeat to people like quotes or like little things here and then i'm like this is so sick if yeah. we're taking on board a lot of the stuff yeah I, very, I, um, I remember really looking up to you and i'd be like yeah i'd just always come to you for advice and be like okay what do i do in this situation and you'd just like the amount of times you're handing me the phone when you're chatting your mates, you're yeah. like, oh, Zach's really good at answering this, here you go. And I'll be like, yeah. I'll be like, buddy, Dr. Phil, buddy, just yeah. doing this. So, yeah. <laughs> so many things from all my friends and everything. It was quite funny. Yeah. But, um, but no, I think like on, on what you said before, um, I think Stella went through a lot of stuff that people in their 20s would just be starting to go through. Mm. So I feel as far as life experience goes, I don't even feel I have as much life experience as Stella. <laughs> I don't think most from what, yeah. from what she told me, and I can't really delve into a lot of that on you, but it's like, I think there's a lot of stuff that, um, you know, it's it's really, really shaped um, in a positive way, um, yeah, the person I mean, yeah. she is today. And, um, well, we talk about that a lot, yeah. right? Like how adversity builds so much character. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I think that's something I've seen in you, Stolzy, from the outside looking in. Obviously, being his best mate, you're... You know, when when a new girl comes into the equation, you're almost a little bit protective. You're mm. you're encouraging, but you're protective because you want to see you mate end up with someone who's loving and caring and has all those amazing traits that I knew he had. Mm. And straight away, I could see that in you. And I think from the outside, for a lot of people, you guys moved at such pace so that people quickly. were like, "Oh yeah. my god, yeah. this what is so full doing? on." Yeah. And I remember people would say to me, "Far out, they look like they're so in love, are they?" And I'd be like. <laughs> They are like, <laughs> and I think you are, while she's have had different life experiences, you mm. are, you both share very similar characteristics and, and wants and mm. desires for mm. the future that for me, I could tell pretty quickly that this was something that was going to last. Mm. And so to see you guys now get to a point where you, you're here and, you know, the exciting developments of recent weeks is it makes so much sense. Mm. Mm. And I guess a big part of your journey is, I know at the time when you'd first come down to Wollongong Stells, yeah. there was a massive whiteboard in <laughs> oh your God. room that yeah. had this plan for the project of happiness on yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. And I guess you were pretty quickly introduced into the fold of, of what Bid had been planning over the course of like that few months, even year prior. Yeah. And yes, um, you decided to jump on board pretty early because what people watching or listening to this may not understand is like, to get a van in the, in the COVID climate took a long oh, time. So this journey yeah. was meant to start so long ago. This is a lucky thing. Like so many stars aligned and so many things fell into place for, I guess, our relationship to form in a sense. Like I could have left years, months early. Like originally my plan was just to stick a bed in the back of a buddy high ace or something. And it was so minute mm. to, compared to where it is today and how much it's advanced since today. And had I gone down that path, for example, then I would have been on the road and off and, mm. you know, it would have been a completely different story. But for, for everything just to, to fall in place and, and it's been, yeah, a bit of a, bit of a miracle. It's worked out. Now. Mm. Yeah, 100%. Can I ask, but, Stelz, when he pitched this idea to you, you know, this was very early in, in your relationship, you were pretty eager and keen to jump on board. What do you think it was that stood out about 
not just him, because obviously we know the connection that you guys have, but what stood out about the project that made you think this aligns with me and this is a journey I want to go on with him? Uh, I feel like I could go into this in so many different avenues and talk a lot about it. But I think at the time, like I, as a lot of 20 year olds had planned to go to Europe before COVID set in. So I knew that something that I really wanted to do was travel, but the uncertainty about doing it overseas was big. And yeah, it was like, what, the second day that I had known, like actually met Zach, he, I was like, what is this whiteboard about? And why do you have a whiteboard in your bedroom? Do you remember me chatting to you going, how am I going to bring this up? Yeah, (laughs) Yeah. because I remember this was a topic of conversation. Like there's a big fuck off whiteboard (laughs) in my room that basically says, hey, I'm not going to be in this place Mm. for a long time. Well, this is, this is a conversation because, you know, I was at a point in my life where I was ready to do a solo trip for a good year and a half. I was like, this is it. And I'd finally come to terms. Mm. And you'd obviously know I worked on myself so, 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 so Mm. much after, you know, everything that happened a while back. And basically, you know, I was so, so strong and uh, mentally and and just in the right place. So I was ready just to go into this huge trip by myself and put myself into situations that I I hadn't experienced. Interject. I think prior to you coming to this realization, I remember there being a question on the board saying, um, travel like with partner with a we'll question get to mark. That. We'll get to that. Okay. Now that was also a sly move that I put in. Okay. I deli- I deliberately. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, yeah, I'll get to that. Yeah, lads, I'll get, lads, I'll get, lads I'll take to, notes. I'll get to that. I'll get to that soon. <laughs> no. So basically, um, you know, I, I was at this place where I was like, look, we're going to do this by myself. And then when, you know, started, or I guess met Stells or whatnot, we were having phone calls, FaceTime. There's a lot mm. of lead up before we actually met. And then, you know, we came over and, um, you know, we had a fantastic week together, I guess you could say. Um, but yeah, on that board and just on that um, thing. So I remember having like so many notes there and I was chatting to you going, shit, you know, as you know, when you just meet someone, you definitely, the last thing you want to do is coming too strong. And I'm like, but I can't not bring this up because mm. I don't want to form this amazing relationship with this incredible girl and mm. then have to go, all right, we've got on your trip, see ya. And now we're both emotionally evolved and attached. Yeah. And then it's just going to be an absolute kill on both of us. Mm. So I was like, it's going gonna, it's gonna to have to be addressed early on. It's going to have to be brought up. But how am I going to go about it to still maintain this relationship, but also get her on board with this trip? Because it would be so much fun doing this together. Um, I don't need someone to film. No, <laughs> I'm joking around. I'm, I'm, I'm learning that the hard way now. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> But yeah, so basically I had on that board, like all these notes, like full detailed notes about the purpose, still have that, that about board. the project. I still have that board. Yeah. Um, and in the corner, I was like, right at the top, I was like, travel with someone, question mark. And I was like hoping, I rewrote that afterwards when I knew Stelz was coming down because I was hoping she saw that. So mentally she read it and it was sort of something that she potentially brought up or addressed or was in the back of her mind. So then when I spoke to her later on, um, you know, it would have mm. been a bit easier. Made a bit more so, sense. Yeah. You know, it's... Fun facts. I've, I've only known you, Stells, now for a, a year and a half. Okay. And, and I, I love and adore you. I think you're such an amazing human being. And I'm, and I'm so glad that he's met you and you're the person in his life. But I remember being, you know, the, the year before that we'd been like joined mm. by the hip every mm. day. Yeah. <laughs> we would we would have these conversations and these discussions that were so positive mm. and so uplifting. And I yeah. knew that if I was coming into a morning walk in just a shitty yeah. headspace, yeah. I was going to be better for yeah, it. I live for those I, morning walks. Yeah. And I feel like I can relate to that in walking with you now. I'm like, yeah. sometimes when I'm feeling really negative, I'm like, Zach, can we go for a walk with Brad? Seriously, it like, it's like... Well, I think we have done that for each other. And mm. thanks for that. And, and I just, I remember... You know, we would talk because we're probably both guys who can talk. I can't say that I'm sitting here with a fiance <laughs> with um, a ring on a finger, but I can say that our discussions around relationships yeah. and finding a significant other in the lead up to you meeting Stills yeah. were very much around the sense that like we were never interested in like just like short term, well, like un- like things that lacked meaning conversations that a lot of people would struggle to have we found as our go-to and as i know yeah like a lot of our conversations i don't think i've ever had a conversation unless i was violently hung over and i couldn't even yeah. the title, you've, you've dealt with a fair bit not anymore back in the day <laughs> um 
But yeah, it was like our conversations were just so deep, profound, straight to the point. And I felt like, you know, we just tackled a lot of things, whether it be something that I needed to get your advice on or you need to get my advice on. Yeah. But we both gelled so well and were what each other needed. One hundred percent. And for me, it was just I could sense, you know, you wanted to go do this journey and, and go and travel. And then we were having these conversations. It almost felt like there were two mm. parts of your life happening from the outside yeah. looking in. There was this, I guess, this sense of adventure and this want to go on that quest and yeah. go travel the country and, and be out and about meeting people and yeah. discovering what this country has to offer. But there was this sense of conversation that we had every day on these one or two walks and when we sat down for coffees mm -hmm. and ran up our bill at Lee and me and, yeah. you know, whenever we were together, there was <laughs> such a positive uplifting and yeah. warmth to the conversation that it made sense when the project of happiness became the idea yeah. and it merged, it kind of merged those two things. Yeah. It merged the tone of conversation that formed a part of who you were yeah. and it brought that to the sense of adventure of getting in a van and traveling around the country. So to see you two at a point now where we're literally weeks literally away, weeks away yeah. from you turning the key and, and driving off into the, into the sunrise, we'll say, <laughs> um, because it's the beginning of great things. I'm very excited and I want yeah. to dive into what the project is. So maybe give us like the brief bio of what, yeah what this is <laughs> what the aim is and then we'll dive into it and break it down I'll, a little more i'll try and make it as short as i can <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a big thing but i'll try and make it short so basically the project of happiness is a concept that stemmed from wanting to make a difference in everyday lives it's about showing each individual that they have the power to not only make someone's day but mm -hmm. in some instances change their life by expressing love gratitude and happiness when you feel it for one another like, I love the, love the saying, like, having gratitude and not expressing it, it's like wrapping a gift and not giving it. It's almost like buying a kid a red bike for Christmas and then just not giving it to him. Mm. So gratitude's exactly the same as that bike. Like, let me ask you something. Like, if you had the power to make someone's day, would you do it? 100%. Yeah. And, and it's funny you say this right here, and it's funny the tone of conversation right now, because just the other day I'd been for a walk down the beach mm. on our... The, you know, the old and still stomping ground. Yeah. <laughs> and a friend passed and she said, I'm literally listening to you right now. And it was my episode where I spoke about handing out gratitude cards to my yeah, family yeah, and my mates, yeah, you yeah. being one of them. And how much of an impact that not only had on the people that I was handing them to, but me. Yeah. And so you saying that, like 100% echo everything you're saying. It's, mm. it's such a sound point. And it's a question that I think not a lot of people often ask themselves. Mm, absolutely. So, yeah, it's just one of those things that we have as humans out there and, and, and to try and give you a little idea of what we're actually going to be doing. Um, so we aim to, I know Stella's a bit <laughs> adverse to this. I want to try and chat to 50 people a day. Oh, it's not that I'm adverse, the, not adverse to it. I just think realistically a, I don't I like know. to aim high. But I mean, Very high. But my, <laughs> all in all, my expect expectations are over this trip over the next year, year and a half, however long it is, if I can have an impact on just one person in that time, positive influence their life, well, happy days, job done. Bloody mm -hmm. oath. Um, that's, that's what I'm setting out. And I'm doing it for, um, do, as much as I'm doing for them, I'm also doing it um, for myself and the other side of things. Like, mm -hmm. as you know, I'm a very confident um, person who's comfortable in most situations. Yeah. And everyday life and I want to put myself in uncomfortable situations I want yeah. to make myself feel what I felt you know years and years ago when you're growing up and you're you know you're going through these changes and, and growing as a person I want to put myself back into that stage at an older age and see what I can learn like I'm not sure what's out there I'm not sure what I can you know um, where I'm going to grow or how I'm going to grow but I want to put myself in those uncomfortable situations definitely um, so I, yeah. I think I love what you're saying there because, and I think you both like this, you know, because of being able to, even mm. as a couple observe you guys for the last year and a half yeah. and you both love to like push the boundaries and, and have a lot on your plate. Yes. And it. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you know, I recently, as many of the listeners, viewers know, I'm a big fan of Matthew McConaughey's book, oh. Green Lights. Okay. Unbelievable, right? Listened to it for the third time in COVID ISO a few weeks back. I've also read it. Is there it. more you're getting out of it on the third time? 100%. Yeah. 
yeah. there was something I really picked up in the end this time and it, it was something I've never picked up in the book yeah. and it just stuck with me. It was him talking about, he said, you know that famous Oscar speech he had where he spoke mm, about yeah. my heroes, me in yeah. five years. Yeah. He actually said, I've kind of scrapped that concept because I found I was always chasing what was in the future and I was almost acting out my life and yeah, failing to live in the present. Yeah. And, and I think a big part of what you guys are leaning into with the project of happiness is looking what's presently in mm. front of you mm-hmm. and being grateful and appreciating it. And it's amazing to be someone who strives for great things and yeah. pushes. And I'm a, you know, I'm a big advocate for pushing outside of your comfort zone. It's changed my life in the last mm. two years for the better. But there is something about recognizing where your two feet are that I recognized in that part of the book. I recognize it in your journey. I also recognize it in a recent listen, um, Brian Cranston's book, yeah. A Life in Parts, where he spoke about being present in whatever you're doing right now and committing yourself to it 100% and giving it everything you've got, like stripping it down and analyzing how much energy you can give to the given moment that's in front of you. Yeah. And really, that's what gratitude is. Mm. Gratitude is... Not always, because I think if we're always looking ahead at the future, yeah. are we ever happy? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, exactly. so talk to me about how you're going to impact people's lives. So basically, the whole the whole idea and, and why I decided to, um, I guess, employ this way of doing things is I think everyone in the world at the moment they own a mobile phone. Mm. It's common. Everybody has a mobile phone, right? Um, so I wanted to use that as a tool to. Um, be able to express gratitude. Um, you know, it takes 10 seconds to send a text. Everyone's sending multiple texts a day. It's a very common thing. So what I'm going to be doing and what we're going to be doing, sorry, is going around and chatting to people and asking them one simple thing. It's like, tell me someone at the moment in your life that you're grateful for. And whether that be their mum, their dad, their friends, whoever it may be, someone they look up to. Um, then asking them why they first came to mind. What, why, why are you grateful for them? Yeah. And then after letting them really sit there and think about it and delve into it themselves and express that, just go, look, if you could make that person's day right now, if you could put a massive smile on their face, would you do it? And, you know, being someone that they're extremely grateful for, obviously, absolutely, of course yeah, you of do course. it. Of course you do it. So the favour that I ask them is to just get out their phone right now and just tell, them, tell that person they're grateful for exactly what they told me that they're grateful for them and, and why, and just send them a quick text. Yeah, now, the so, re- it's so simple, it's isn't simple. it? It's simple, it's a simple thing, but the thing is a lot of people out there at the moment are not doing that. Like everybody has these amazing feelings of gratitude and, and you know, happiness and everything inside of them for one another, but only a small amount ever gets expressed, especially around, around males. Like, yeah. you know, males are the, the um, majority of, of suicides out there at the moment, not to get that deep, but, but it's males. Yeah. And I think that, you know, if people were more open about how they felt, well, you know, imagine how many lives could change. It's, it's such a good point because I think, you know, the, and I've spoken about this a few times on the potty over the course of the last few months, the ideas of gratitude and grat- like gratitude has become a bit of a buzzword yeah, over the has. course of the last sort of like two years. It's, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of the self-help books mm-hmm. are focused around gratitude. And, and I find that whenever we listen to or look at content that, I guess, circulates and surrounds mm. feelings and ideas of gratitude, it's usually the expression is write it down in a journal mm. or write down a few things every day, which I think is amazing. But what you're leaning to feels powerful in the sense of actually share it with sure. someone. Well, this is the thing. And, you know, you see a lot of the times out there, I've seen, you know, heaps of things on social media and everything about people saying, and, I, and I'm not saying this is, a, this is a bad thing at all. It's fantastic. It's great. But there's people out there saying, look, um, you know, tell your friends you love them. And that's great. Like, it's really good. But be a bit deeper. Go a bit, go a bit yeah. more. Because telling you love someone, mm. it's because it's said so much out there it's at the moment. A... It's just like, oh, hey, bro, I love you. Like, you know what I mean? It's just this thing that's yeah. said so it's much. It's a... lost its full big power. In a yeah. Sense. Knock your things. <laughs> um, but um, so what I want to do is, um, you know, get them to express the gratitude and say why. Like, literally... Tell their friends, hey, look, I'm so grateful that you're in my life right now. You've had such a positive impact, Um, you know, um, going for the casual walk that we do every morning and, you know, it really, really puts a massive smile on my face and I wouldn't be where I am without you right now. Like that, hearing that as a person 
would be so much more impactful than saying, mm-hmm. hey, bro, I love you. Gives you know so much I mean? meaning to it, doesn't it? It does, it does. And I think, and the reason why I did a text as well, because I really thought about whether I should do a call, a text, try and, you know, how am I going to go about this? The reason why I did a text is because when you do a call, you're relying on that other person to answer the phone and the end of the communication. And sometimes they might not answer. Yeah. So if you've got that, for the people that feel uncomfortable or awkward about going out and doing this, for them to come up with the courage to actually call whoever it may be and do it is a lot in itself. And if they don't answer, they might go, oh, mm. no, actually, don't worry about it. That's fine. I gave it For try. sure. You know what I mean? So what I want to do is counteract that and say, look, hey, well, let's maybe not do a call. Let's do a text. And that way they have it, the person has it on their phone, they might be working and they can read it later, they can have it there, yeah. they can screenshot and it, they, they can, can do whatever they want with it, it's theirs. It's almost like it's, it's journaled into their, their phone, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, and um, they can reread it. They can reread it. Yeah, that's through. such a good point. Because you might text them when they're, you know, not in that mindset of, hey, I, I need some help or need some, um, you know, gratitude right now from someone I love. Definitely. But when they go into that spot, they can go with no text, like Stel said. <gasps> That's all right. It's, that's yeah. my bad. They're just kind of sitting there. The, <laughs> the, the photos have fallen down. We've got photos down. They kind of just no stack there. Yeah, no, so they kind of just stack there. It's happened the other day when I, don't, I, think, I think it was just air. sitting a bit close to them. Yeah, it might make like, yeah. it tucked in. Um, what, what a ruckus, isn't that? A way to fucking <laughs> stir it up a bit. But it's, um, it's, so, like, it's so true what you're saying. Yeah. And I, and I echo this a thousand percent because... I know there's messages in my phone I go back to to read Mm. or there's messages that people have sent me on Instagram I go back to read and there's things that I've written down that I go Mm. back to read which were originally sent via message Mm. from someone else and it's so like to me it makes so much sense and it is 100% that no matter who you are, what you do, what you face, you are going to face challenges 100%. and difficulty in your life. Like pain is inevitable. Mm. But mm. Suffering is a, a choice. choice. Oh, yeah, I love that, I love that yeah. saying. And I always think of that. And I think it's the people that you have around you and the way they make you feel, the fact that they make you feel heard and supported, mm-hmm. that get you through those tough times. Because we've all got a bit of resilience and we've all got yeah. a bit of grit in us and you can develop that. But to know that you've got a, a team of people around you, and this is why it's so important to in every area of your life, you know, choose your people wisely. Mm. Mm. Because if you create a supportive environment, you you will thrive. You know, you will thrive. What's that saying? Your tribe is your vibe? 100%. Mm. And it's so true. And I look at, it's one of the reasons I'm very grateful for you guys. I think uh, for anyone listening, watching, I always feel a great task. Well, I wouldn't even call it a task. A great exercise to do is to sit down and write down. And I'd done this a, a few months ago. I sat down and I wrote, like, if I was in a really tough situation, and for me, those tough situations or those moments of adversity are usually health-related at some point. You know, if I'm sitting in a hospital bed and my my lungs are bleeding, who are the people that check in? Mm -hmm. You two are some of those people. And And you build this list of people in your life who you know give you value, you Mm -hmm. know who you can lean on when you need it, but then you've also got to ask yourself, am I willing to give energy and value to these to, people to in return? As well. yeah. And and I think for for what you're doing, the beauty is you're allowing people to get really interpersonal with who their inner circle is yeah. and, and to share that gratitude with them. But because of the amazing tool that social media is being TikTok, Instagram, and we'll make sure that all of their links are in the show description <laughs> in the show notes. You're, you've got an opportunity to share yeah. this with an audience of people who can then go and get interpersonal and with their people. This is the thing. Anyone out there in the world at the moment can do this themselves. They don't, mm. they don't need me. I don't need to be going around and yeah. necessarily doing this, but all I'm doing is sort of facilitating the things that everyone can do anyway. Like, you know what I mean? People, oh, I'm not the one with these feelings for their friends. They've got them. They're the ones yeah. that are grateful for them. All they've yeah. got to do is just let them know. It's as simple as that. Why do you think it is? Because, you know, we're speaking about this and it feels like it's a it's a common theme of conversation yeah. in many friend circles on, on many podcasts and in books, this idea of being a good person and sharing mm. gratitude, sharing love, being mm. loving without expectation. Yeah. But then you go through a comment section on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and there is so much hate and negativity yeah. towards people who are being honest about who they are. There's, and, and, and it frustrates me. It, it mm. really frustrates me from a sense of, you know, I feel like a lot of the world is being hypocritical. Mm. They're being good to their people, but they're not being good to the people around them. Yeah. 
what would you say is the, the cause or reason? Maybe I'll come to you, Stills, because I feel like it's, <laughs> you know, you've got a bit of a following on social at the minute and I'm sure you've seen both positive and yeah. negative sides of this. Definitely. I feel like the bigger your platform is, the more like you open yourself up to hate and positivity. But, and it used to really get me down. Like I would cry to mom and be like, why is this person saying something so mean? And she, she would always tell me like, it's not a reflection of you. It's a reflection of them. And I think if somebody is, it's same, same with little kids in primary school, or whatever, if they're acting up, it's not because they're a bad kid. It's there's something else going on whether that's at home or whatever it is, they're going through some kind of pain that's so much worse than that comment that they're saying to you. So I don't know, I just kind of try and remind myself that it's not me, it's them. They're obviously hurting a lot more than this comment can hurt me for them to have to like feel the need to yeah. bring me down to it's that It's usually level. insecurity, right? Yeah, it's a reflection of their insecurities for sure. And I guess the you know, you hear it all the time, but... You know, they're the people that probably do need the love, mm. I guess, the most in that sort of sense. Yeah, it's that Gary uh, V thing, right? Well, love. Gary V is a prime example. He's fantastic at this. Like, he, you know, you've seen those videos he puts up where, you know, shows all the negativity that people are throwing out and he just goes, great, look, I love that. Thanks for your honesty. Like, a, like you, that's yeah. why when, you, when you're looking at people, I mean, someone, I think we chatted about this ages ago, you know, there might be 97% of, you know, what they're expressing, um, the personality of whatnot that you don't agree with, it might be negative, you might not like it, but there is a 3% of positive that you can take out of mm. that. And I think Gary Vee's great at that, you know, he, he doesn't look at it like this person's having a go at me, let's put my wall up and, you know, retaliate and come back at him. They go, great, look, the good thing I can take out of this is the person's honesty, what they're saying, what they're feeling, mm-hmm. um, you know what I mean? And, you know, if they're doing that, they're spending their energy and time on Gary, you know what I mean? Like 100%. They're, they're mm-hmm. hearing about that, so, you know what I mean? There's got to be something there that's... There's something missing. Yeah, missing exactly, piece of the puzzle. exactly, man. So, and I think, you know, just a bit of love to these people can go a long way. Um, For sure. You know, that's not to say that's all people. I mean, there's people out there that, you know, doesn't always work that way, but, yeah. um, you know, it's a um, good place to start anyway. For sure. Let's talk a little bit about, I guess, this big island that you're going to be traveling around of Australia. <laughs> it is ginormous. I actually, through some recent um, conversation with friends and um, fellow runners, we're talking about some of these people who are doing crazy runs mm. across Australia and through Australia. And we're like, oh, I wonder what the circumference of Australia is. Mm. Well, it's 26,000 kilometers. Yeah, it's a, it's a bloody long way. Yeah. And, you know, there are many people who go out and journey around the country in a caravan or a van like you guys are about to not many people do it with the flavor that you're about to do it but i can imagine um sort of aside from the project itself there's probably a lot of buzz energy and excitement around getting to look at some of the most beautiful spots in the Mm. world travel wise what are you guys excited for over the course of these coming months yeah well i think um that's another massive part of the project as well so as much as it is about the project, what I also want to delve into, and especially for YouTube and um, whatnot is, because I mean, chatting to a lot of people, everyone, the first point of call when they travel is either Europe or overseas or these big mm. things, but hardly anyone, you'd be surprised, has actually explored their own backyard. Like yeah. Myself. Like, you know, we've lived here our whole yeah. life, but we just haven't properly explored it. For so sure. I think um, mainly Americans will be interested, but a lot of Aussies as well will be interested to see the nature and the, 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 the landscape that we, we live in and the people around. Bloody so earth. I think a big part of the, pro, like as much as it is about the project, it also is about, you know, showing people Australia and, you know, having a sort of getaway style vibe towards yeah. the YouTube channel as well. And I think that's... Mm. Um, I know. feel like our individual platforms will probably focus a lot on mm. that travel yeah. vlogging yeah. kind of style and then... We'll also have the project yeah. happiness in between. Exactly, because well. I think that like my main focus, one hundred percent, is the project and what Stella, ex- what Stella's excels at, and what she's really good at, is is you know bringing to light and and showing all the positives about a certain you know place, of food, and whatever it may mm. be, and, and really living that sort of travel lifestyle. So yeah, I think getting better at it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I will I think, say um, that's going to be probably Stella's forte as we're going around. Yeah, and, yeah, you know, for sure. We both have. Um, I will say from the outside looking in, when you look at if I didn't know you guys, if I looked at your Instagrams, <laughs> I'd be like, holy hell, these these two are like professionals behind an iPhone lens. <laughs> and so many people say it to me, like um, one of our mates, 
Joey Dixon the other day. He goes, fuck, Bids knows how to take an Instagram reel. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, look at some yeah. of the content. Yeah. Like it's, well. <laughs> yeah, and it's like you guys are great at capturing that stuff and, you know, you love creating and, and posting good mm. quality content. So mm. I'm excited to see you go on that little journey around the country. And I think, you know, my, my old man and um, his partner, Karen, there with my son, might I add, Hunter Boy, the little yeah. dog child, <laughs> uh, traveling up North Queensland at the minute. And they watch a lot of this sort of content, yeah. like traveling around Australia. But I think a lot of the content... And every now and then, like, I'll come into the lounge room and they're sitting there watching yeah. um, some family in a van or some old couples who <laughs> gold detect around the country or whatever they do. <laughs> and, you know, dad still hasn't found any gold yet. Um, but they, they watch yeah. all these vids. There doesn't seem to be a lot of young people doing it. Mm. A lot of oh, people really? traveling around the country seem to be of that older demographic. Yeah. So I feel like it's exciting for you guys because... To go on that journey as, you know, a young couple mm. and share like those great little cafes and spots mm. to go get food, like where to swim, where to be active. And you're both very active too. Mm, so like I'm, for me, I'd, if I was going to travel around the country, I'd go to you guys for like that advice. It's going to be a good advice. insight into showing actually how you can, from the everyday things, like I think we were talking about um, this morning was how we got a gym. You know what I mean? Like little, little things yeah, like that. Yeah, really. Like the, as far as food and exercise and everything, it's like, you know, because a lot of people go, yeah, I want to go, you know, travel around and do these big trips. But it's mm. like, well, how do I do all the stuff that I want to do? So it's yeah. going to be a good insight into showing I, people, um, I guess, yeah. And I feel like that. when you do see those younger people traveling around Australia, they're doing it in a – they're surfers and they're like just mm. going yeah. on surf trips. Yeah, very beachy sort of yeah. interesting to see us who are so not don't appear to be that campy kind of couple <laughs> we're quite hey, as, I I hate definitely say, not materialistic definitely in some not it's sort of be interesting to see how we cope I say materialistic but i'd say no not you, you definitely aren't but materialistic we, but you are you well, are very um I'm about... You, let's just say you're almost very bougie, I think is the word. <laughs> yeah, for it. Well, we I'm like about living that. living life to the full potential in the sense of if I can attain something, I will do it to the best of my ability and the, and the best possible yeah, way for of sure. that. So, I mean, whether that's, you know, um, having a white painted wall or a cement rendered wall inside my yeah. van. Or, you know, it's... <laughs> yeah. it's yeah. Well, I, yeah, it, I feel like I'm normally... Oh, don't worry. I don't know what I was going to say. It'll just be interesting to see us yeah. living van life. Yeah, for sure it will be. And I think that's part of the fun in it though, right? Like is to see you go on that adventure and, and to adjust. It's like it's going to take time to adjust. Yeah. Mm. I don't like – because the van is gorgeous. And we'll talk a little bit about the van in a minute. But the the vehicle or the home that you guys mm. will be spending your next year and a bit in well, this is, the is thing. gorgeous. We're going to be spending a good year and a half in it, man. So, mm. you know, you want to make sure it's, it's oh, for sure. comfortable. With and, yeah. and but it's still going to be a challenge. Like, yeah. it's still, oh, yeah. you know, yeah, you're yeah. going from being in a home where you've got so much space and, like, if you, like, as any couple does, if yeah. you're having a blue, yeah. you know, one goes to <laughs> one side of the house, yeah. the other one goes to the oh, other. Right. She can just jump on the roof and I'll yeah. just sit downstairs and go from there. Be, like, pouring down yeah. rain and I'll be sitting up on the roof. Like, <laughs> in a poncho. Suck it, get yeah. away from <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm a bit nervous about that, actually. Yeah, no, I feel we'll, like we'll be right. we're already living in I mean, I think you're going to feel, um, you know, a bit calmer having that freedom and just being able to get out and go for a walk and get for sure. away mm. from the van, like... It's not just the being we're living in. We're going to have so much space around yeah, us. Yeah, we've to got bloody oath. Yeah. Talk to me about, we'll, we'll get into the van and the Renaults and, you know, what's partaken in that mm. so far. But I want, to, um, I want to get into maybe some of the spots that you're most looking forward to seeing yeah. around the country. Yeah. yeah. So, because I can imagine that maybe there's a few people who have just started following the project who are like van lifers or aspiring yeah, van yeah, lifers yeah. who'd be listening to this, watching this. So, Stells, what would you say for you? maybe top three places that you're eager to see? Um, oh, this is hard to narrow it down to three, but I feel like I'm a big beach bum. I love the beach and blue water and just anything mm. with the salt, sun and sand. Um, so probably like northern New South Wales because I haven't spent a great deal of time up there. Um West Oz, West Oz, I'm really excited for, and South Oz, like yeah. the coastline. Yeah. Have you ever been to West Oz? No. Oh, I've been to Perth, but I haven't properly explored 
what people see on socials and yeah because yeah, like it looks nice, like, gorgeous yeah, yeah. i'm really excited yeah. for rotness island i'm keen for um i think Ningaloo the- reef yeah. oh yes yeah. yeah yeah it's that'll be sick mm. that'll be awesome so yeah. are you gonna do that stuff like swim the one? yeah because yeah, we went when we're over in um Maldives. yeah we were we supposed to do with, it um, yeah, some of the bunch of sharks and we were supposed to do the whale, whale sharks, sharks but there, they but weren't it was just, like, um, the weather conditions were not prime yeah. for it and yeah we're like, oh, well, so. we'll just pay 12 times the amount in australia <laughs> <laughs> but Talk- no it'll be um exciting even like the idea of seeing a sunset over the water oh. in australia like it's yeah. You know, we're used to waking up with the sun rising over the water here mm. and, you know, the, I couldn't count on, yeah. you know, a group of hands, fingers and toes how many times the three of us have yeah. walked at sunrise and watched it rise over the over the water. True, I forgot about that. Yeah. But, like, yeah, just that difference in difference environment. In, yeah. and 100%. I think anywhere we go is going to – we're going to have a new sense of – this is what I'm excited for as well, we'll – have a new sense of appreciation. Yeah. Because, mm. you know, we live in one of the nicest parts of – Australia, I reckon, down here, you know, you're walking the yeah. mile, it's two minutes from, you know, where you live, it's incredible. Yeah. Uh, and as much as we appreciate that, it's just become the norm sort of thing. So mm. it'd be good to go out and get a new sense of appreciation by having that complete freedom of not having to be anywhere at a certain time, not have to do anything, like we're in charge of our own lives. It's like escaping that, um, you know, I wouldn't call it a rat race, but ex- ex- escaping the social norms of the nine to five. I and think it's so important for anyone right yeah. like is is to travel and get outside of your space mm. and your comfort zone and something that's been on my mind a lot lately is when you're always trying to you know like we spoke about before mm. you're always working towards a sense of mm. achievement or what you've yeah. you've hoped and dreamed for your life sometimes you need to just get away yeah and and put everything down and go and just be present with life and experience mm. things and you know i had an amazing trip at the start of the year to port douglas mm. a solo adventure Ooh, that's my water bottle um a solo adventure and one of the things for me about that trip was just being in a new area where i knew no one you meet mm. new people like naturally it's so beautiful the daintree rainforest you know snorkeling yeah. on the reef mm. and just being in in tropical north queensland which is pretty everywhere yeah um i oh. felt so relaxed coming home I just realised I said Northern New South Wales instead of Northern Queensland. Yeah, I was confused why I said it before. I'm yeah. Like, Isn't that like it? I, where I used to live. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Are you sure that's bio? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. No, nah, I, I, I kind of knew what you were leaning yeah. to. I um, maybe cut that bit out. <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, it's funny because it's such a beautiful part of the mm. world and you forget that it's our country. Like mm. it's yeah. Northern Queensland, like especially Port Douglas there where you've got the Daintree and the Reef. It's the only place in the world to have two World Heritage listed sites oh, wow. in the same area. Mm. Mm. So it's like, it's wild and it's yeah. just so beautiful. For me, one thing that I loved about that trip was I put my phone down for a couple of days and just mm. yeah. immersed myself in where I was and what I was doing. Yeah. What do you think the balance will be for you guys? Because obviously a big part of this journey is documenting it. Yeah. Will yeah. there be days where so, you just put the phones away? Well, this is the thing. I want to, um, I'm wondering how we should go about it in the sense of whether we have wouldn't call them days off, but whether we have some, um, you know, personal time. Yeah. Where we really um, recharge, refresh, get away from this and just have that freedom of just exploring and really yeah. taking everything in because, um, you know, the project of happiness was the, is the reason why. Yeah. We're originally why we're going around. Um, so, you know, that is my, that is our core focus. That is, that is what, you know, really want to focus on. And so I want to make sure that, you know, I'm exploring that to, I don't want to have any limitations or hurdles or anything in Definitely. stopping that from, because that is what I feel my purpose and what I'm really, mm. purpose, what I'm really sort of going 100%. For. So, um, you know, I reckon there's going to be a portion of the day where it's going to be solely focused on filming, editing, you know, getting yeah. content and whatnot. But I want to make sure that, um, you know, we're still having time for ourselves and enjoying life. Yeah. Um, you know, cause that's what it's all about as well. So, and I think what a lot of people don't, um, you know, realise, because we upload a fair bit on, on social, or Stills does, and, but really, and you'll know as well, it takes literally like five, ten seconds to grab a video, then you put your phone down, enjoy whatever it is for the next hour, yeah. and then you might rip it out again. So really, some days we're only spending five minutes, like, actually getting content, yeah, and it looks like course. we've had our phones out all day. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think... I yeah. think that, yeah, I can touch on a few things there, but I think... A lot of people don't realise, okay, yeah, it takes two seconds to film that, but the actual editing time, 
that goes into producing that content and mm. getting it out is a lot longer yeah, than what you think. And yeah, I think when it's the outside of the Instagram, Instagram story, story, what I was trying course, to get yeah. at was that you still get to be immersed in that moment. Yeah, is what I was trying to say. I like, think, so yeah. it might be, you know. I think coming from a social media background and doing it for so many years. I think it'll be something that you'll just have mm. to learn the mm. hard way in that maybe Definitely. we won't be able to create as much content as you're maybe antis- anticipating. Yeah. And it's like that saying you can't pour from an empty cup. We do, we will have to kind of take a step back and look at our days and be like, right, are yeah. we actually putting, giving ourselves enough time to recharge and put us first and our relationship? Mm. And then, yeah, it'll just be a learning curve. I think yeah. you'll have to just take it day by day and adjust yeah, definitely. accordingly. Yeah, I think it's, um, yeah, I reckon there'll definitely be a few times that, you know, test our relationship and get each other's oh, nerves, yeah. nerves 100%. But I feel that, you know, we'll start to, like you said, adjust and get used mm. to um, how life is, is panning out and, and how each day happens. And I think it'll become easier and easier as we go on. Mm. Um, of course. But yeah, good. You know, you've got things like the Taj Mahal, um, <laughs> the Empire State Building. Let's talk about the eighth wonder of the world, the van, the yeah. vehicle. <laughs> um, the vehicle to tell these stories. It is an absolute masterpiece. <laughs> if anyone's been following you guys on social, um, if you're not, obviously go check them out via the show notes. But this van is incredible. It's mm. amazing. I th- yeah. yeah. Talk to me about just some of the decisions behind that and sort of what inspired the look, the feel, the... Well, the hardest decision was probably deciding whether to just take a... When I was at the dealership, when I first sat down, because I had... You know how much of a perfectionist I am. Yeah. Um, and I guess I had... <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> I, um, you know, I was like ready to rock and roll on this trip, going, okay, we're going to be leaving in like three months. I'll just pick up a van, get rent and done. And when they said, look, it's probably going to be, you know, you can either get a um, new Sprinter now or you can order the one you want, which was like an extra long wheel base with the high roof, so an extra 40 centimetres at the back and, and taller. And so it was whether to wait sort of six months for that. And I was like, look, and I made the hard decision of waiting. And I was like, sweet, I'm gonna, I'll, I want that, so I'm going to wait. And that ended up turning into a year and a half wait. Mm-hmm. Then. So, you know, I was stoked when it finally came. But I think what inspired the renovation itself and the style was um i think think it's a good reflection of us like we take a lot of pride in ourselves Mm. and the way that we look and feel and stuff and so which is such a good it's definitely a big reflection of our personalities yeah it's a very minimalist style setup but it has so much character when you get inside so you know obviously being in real estate for so long and having a i guess still have a passion for, for gorgeous homes and property and the way people renovate. Yeah, definitely. Whatnot. There's a lot of stuff that um, got inspired off. And uh, I think it was a build by Greyer. They yep. did some of the most fantastic builds. And they had this fully cement rendered house, just completely. I've always... And, and I think that's, um, you know, was one of the things that really um, I... gave me that idea. And so basically it was, um, we've got a full cement render. Well, I said so many times, I want to cement rend like I want to do cement yeah. render, and he was like, "No, nah, can't do it, can't I do it." Once said it. Are you joking? <laughs> All right. Anyway, um, we'll leave this argument for we'll post podcast. <laughs> no, no. So it was it was whether to go that sort of nice beachy feel, but I feel a lot of people are doing that at the moment. Yeah. So I was like, I want to go for something different. So it was this complete cement render in um, Spanish cream was the color. And, um, you know, there's a lot of stuff that the boys at um, uh, South Coast Van Fit Outs, they're incredible, Cal and Chris, they're unreal. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people would have seen them. But there's a lot of stuff that they hadn't actually done yet or explored yet that we're sort of testing out in my van, which is really exciting. Yeah. So, but yeah, it's a complete cement render. We've got a nice, um, it's an oak kitchen top that the boys next door. Oh, to. beautiful. Um, it's like one of the most um, high-end woods out there at the moment. It was expensive but we got there but it's um it's this huge long kitchen bench top that has its own coffee section um there's all leather lounges um out the back and i've got a happy jack bed so yeah, if you've yeah. seen if you've seen on socials it's basically a bed you press a button and it comes down from the roof and just maximizes just, that space yeah so basically yeah. i can have an um a u-shaped lounge at the back that we can sit down during the day put the bed up to the roof at night or whatnot Fuck, or during the day, sorry and then just bring it down at night um, we've got, everything's controlled by my phone. So all the lights, just, that's awesome. All controlled by that. So it's quite handy. We've got a nice Bose soundboard, 
um, up the top, which is great, fantastic. So good for pump the tunes. You pump the tunes. Pump a lot to talk about through the, yeah. the speakers. <laughs> That's exactly it. Um, but no, it's all come together fantastic. And I think, you know, I took a lot off. Pinterest is your best friend when you're renovating. Yeah, There's definitely. so many ideas and people have come up with some great stuff off there. Um, one that I did um, see, I think it was over in um, America somewhere. They've done, so basically when you walk in, um, I've got a, so you've got the two seats where you drive. Yep. Drive seat, passenger seat. And then behind there is a um, wall and I've got an archway that leads into that front section, but I put a mirror on that arch so you can oh, sort yeah, of nice. look up the hallway and actually, you know, um, get that sense of, uh, bigger sense of space. Absolute um, magic, hey. Eh? And then we've got a little um, planter box at the front, which will have either like olive trees and cactuses there to give it a nice fresh feel. Just give it that vibe. Yeah. I love it. It's so I exciting. It it's so exciting. I just think for so many of the people who are aspiring to do a trip like this or, you know, for the people who just need to receive and and be a part of that message that you're putting out. This is going to be the greatest journey to follow. And I'm excited for it. I feel like, you know what I feel like it is? For me, this has been like watching the last episode of like season seven of Game of Thrones and then like (laughs) waiting for like another season to come out for a year and a half. Because I feel like I've known about and been on the edge of my seat to watch this unfold. and, And I'm so excited for you guys to go on this journey now. What does that feel like to know that we're literally weeks away from taking the first hasn't first quite, K? Mm. Yeah, I'm not sure about you, so I'll let you answer this as well. But I, I hasn't quite hit me yet because I still feel like I've got so much work to do, man. Like yeah. I'm going to be mm. working up until that like last day on this. Yeah. Like you'll know, I've got my you know PR packages I'm getting sorted out. I've got you know shipments of clothes coming over. I've got so much stuff that was sort of really been. Um, just working on so so hard so right now I'm still in that mindset of grind 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 yep. mm. working. Um, I'm not in that I haven't had that complete sense of freedom yet like oh my god we're going on this trip for sure it's still got so much to do and you know Stells has been working tirelessly as well on, on um, a bit of more style on a hiring page and a few, few things else and yeah. yeah been helping me heaps with um, the project and stuff as well so we've both been in this mentality of like working hard and, and hustling in that sort of sense mm. so um, how have you felt babe? How do you feel? Uh, I, yeah, I feel like we're both just working really hard right now in keeping our project businesses yeah. above water and trying to get them launched and yeah. ready to go. Of and course. I guess we're both quite perfectionists. Zach a little bit more than myself. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, just working really hard to get those things done. And I don't think it'll feel real until we're not even when we're actually in the van but i think a couple of weeks after we'll be like oh my gosh okay we're we're living yeah life on on the road but i think in saying that seeing the van come to life and our literally our pinterest board come to life yeah it's like oh my gosh like we're actually doing this we're going to be moving our stuff into that when you first said yes to coming on the road is this what you expected it to be like how it is created now what was your like thought? the van yeah, when you first yeah or just just project in general or the van like mm. when you first said yes i want to go on the road how did you feel it was what was in your mind what did you think it was going to look like was it how it is now or um no i kind of expected like i've always gone camping like since a young mm. kid and i we've always done it very like very minimalistically <laughs> like yeah. chuck your shit in the bat in the in the car and you go and sleep in a tent yeah. so i was kind of expecting it to be a lot similar to that and just like very rustic grungy very, yeah. <laughs> um but to see a cement rendered van is definitely expe- exceeded my expectations so yeah it's like yes and no it's yeah. i think there's a lot more work that's being put into it than i expected for Which sure. Is, yeah. Good. What are you most scared about going into this trip? Um, missing out on what's in front of us. Like How's not that? not being present in the moment because we're, we're filming and caught up yeah, in okay. filming. Yeah. That'll definitely be the challenge to navigate, I think, yeah. for the yeah. the part of the journey and it's I think that's a challenge for everyone in life right yeah. now. Yeah. With so much happening around us and you know, we're we're always in chase of something else in today's society. Oh, that is true. Yeah, go fill up. That's that's the biggest challenge. I guess while he fills up his water, great question for you, Stelzy. Yeah. That ring on your finger. Yeah. Obviously, 
to go away originally, you were going to be going away as boyfriend and girlfriend, partners, yeah. you know, um, I guess incredible friends and connected. And now you're going away with a ring on your finger as and fiance. as a fiance, exactly. <gasps> How does that feel? And, you know, because you're, for the people listening, the age difference in you two is, is it seven or eight years? Eight years. Yeah. Eight years. So you're 22. He's nearly the big three zero. Yeah. <laughs> what does that feel like? Um, look, I think from day dot, we've always been showed a lot of commitment to each other and kind of mm. spoke it about taking that big step very early on into our relationship. So I think I can't speak for Zach, but I felt like I committed to him pretty much at day dot. So it hasn't changed anything in our relationship, but I guess like security wise, it's like, okay, we are one and like, of course. There's a lot more security in moving forward. Does that answer the question? It does. It does. And I think it it's actually a really beautiful place for you two to be in before yeah. starting on the trip. We're just talking about mm. the engagement bids and kind yeah. of what that, you know, call it unity um, mm. for mm. sake of the traditional, the traditional use of the word is knowing that you two are going to be as one on this trip and for the rest of your lives really kind of felt like that from the day dot anyway yeah. like it's exactly what Stelzi just said yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like um i guess it has cemented it in a little bit more mm. but it still felt like it you know i mean i never had one i guess i, I was always 100 percent certain that this was going to be yeah you bloody dropped out. the old word on day five yeah i was drunk one day at Trogy <laughs> beach I remember because yeah, I remember he called me straight up. <laughs> and I was like, do you know how when you speak and you're like, all right, love you, bye. And but it was like, all right, yeah. I love you, babe, bye. Yeah, and it was just, just came out. Like it wasn't even me going, <laughs> should I say, should I say. Like, it just like, just came out and I was like, oh. We shit. all just sat there and like <laughs> now the doors <coughs> dropped for like 30 seconds straight. Just like, yeah. did he just say that? Yeah. Where were you at the time? I was at a party as well with Indi- one of my best friends. Yeah. And I was like, oh, come and like talk to Zach outside. Like, you know, it's like the first few days and you're like, oh, like just infatuated with each other. And <sighs> we were just on FaceTime and we were just like, oh my gosh, mm. did you just try? Yeah. I remember I got a call. And you just got to roll with it. When that yeah. happens, you know, you just got to just, <laughs> you just roll with it 100%. <laughs> yeah. nah. You're like, I'm going to go now. <laughs> yeah, I was like, <laughs> well, hey, look, it's it's all worked out. Yeah. But you know, without diving in, in into detail, because I think there's an amazing video that summarizes the yeah. incredible engagement that you guys had, which is on your socials. Talk to me about that moment, Bid, dropping a knee, because you are someone that I remember asking and talking to you about this. Mm-hmm. One of the things you've always said to me is one of the things you value most, if not maybe the most, of everything in life is love. Yeah. And it's something you've always I, said. I reckon everything is centered around love. I reckon love, there's nothing in this world that's higher than love. Everything is a tool just to find love, feel accepted, feel, you know, one. I think, like, you know, love and relationships are, like, like I said, like the biggest thing. Like, you know, you, we work to, you know, get money, to feel stable, to, to have a life, to, to love. To, to you know, have a get a partner and, and love you know what I mean like everything leads back mm. to love yeah and you know for me it's if I've got love and if I've got a you know um, a relationship with someone that's so so strong like that I feel that you know anything else that happens in life I can work with it's you know you can move around you can you can change you can do whatever but as long as you got love there you're fine. Like that's it, which doesn't mean? have to be in a relationship it doesn't have to well, be in a relationship like, you can find love within yourself you can find it with friends you can find yeah. it with whoever i'm not talking yeah. about just a relationship in this instance yeah, yes yeah, yeah. but just in general if you've got love for, for you know yourself or for your friends or whoever it may be it's you know you're set in my eyes so did it feel like for you almost um a fulfillment of purpose you know with obviously a, a large journey to go as you continue as as Soon to be, you know, in the future, husband and wife, but now fiance. One one thing I wish, like, I wouldn't say I wish, but like one thing that, you know, like I knew that Stelz was going to say yes. Like I felt pretty certain that Stelz was going to say say yes. We had this little, like, thing that we'd, you'd say, and I didn't know this was because you were trying to confirm that I still wanted to get married, but you would always be like, you still want to marry (laughs) <laughs> like yeah, every I was just joking. Day. I was just, I was going okay. And I'd be like, we talked about it in the past, and it was just something yeah. that you know I knew she was going to say yes. So 
the only concern, or the only like things that made me a little bit nervous on the day was how it was going to look. Because I'd spent four months. I've never been to Bali, dude. I've like, yeah. never been to Bali before. So I'm like, you know, originally like, like there were so many things. Like originally, I sat down with like six different jewelers, had a chat to them, got their idea of what they're about and you know their company and whatnot mm. and finally found a jeweler that i absolutely love and so you know i bought the diamond started on that started on customizing and, and making this ring and um you know once i had that on board i was like sweet okay you know, I did the proposal and i had an idea what i wanted to do but i've never been to bali so i'm like shit and i'd seen this amazing tree on pinterest it was like this giant tree and i had all of these fairy lights sort of like dangling down from like the top of the tree like right down to the ground and this couple dancing underneath and I'm like great want to incorporate that and then I'm like all right and then I'd seen um where was that I think I might have seen oh, could have been Travis Scott's yeah thing. You, you were like oh my god I love this like they've done a little heart in the beach and I'm like a little heart in the beach I can smoke this and anyway so I was like all right got you hold my beer now um I was like pretty much like um I was like, okay, what are we going to do? So I got on, it was funny, I got on Instagram and I had this little diagram and I'm putting all these little things in little places going and like mapping out how I was going to do it. Yeah. And I had had a chat to about two or three different proposal companies over in Bali. And my main thing was like, I need this tree. I was just hunting for this tree. I'm like, that's what I need. So I had like three different companies looking out for this tree somewhere going, where is it? None of them, yeah. two of them couldn't find it. But this one lady, Michelle, absolutely fantastic. She found this tree and I'm like, sweet. And I was on this giant estate. So one of my friends on this huge estate. Yeah. And so we booked out the whole estate and then basically had this tree set up. I had scaffolding up the sides to get all the lights and everything up, um, which was fantastic. And then we basically had, um, it was funny, I ended up getting like 19,000 roses. So it was pretty much um, basically the G2 summit was on at the same time. Oh my gosh. And so the government were pitching, they were like, we need X amount of red and white roses. And then our florist oh, wow. had already tried to buy them. And then so they came back to our florist going, okay, look, you know, the government wants all these. You're going to have to, like, up your thing. So my florist was bidding bit against this other person. One. And um, out of her own money, they bid and we won. So I ended up getting those um, roses, wow. which is fantastic. So I was lucky. I was like, holy shit, that nearly, like... I didn't even know that, yeah. Oh and so basically got all these roses and they were like, you know, Tyson taking care of them, like, day or two before. Got it out, mapped it out. It was great. So I had this big, nice love heart. In the middle with a little path going up and the tree, the lights coming String down. quartet. String quartet. Oh, it was great because I got all our favourite songs. That means yeah. Stars Loved. And basically um, set them, like, you know, 20, 25 songs. And I was like, can you guys try and learn these? And they're like, yes, we'll do the best we can. And so they were learning all these songs. So on the, um, on the day, everything sort of mapped out. And, Beautiful. You know. Which I cool. feel like I, like I really needed that video to watch again and like just look really that moment in. because yeah. in the moment you take off this blindfold and you're like okay what do i take in first there's nineteen thousand bloody roses around <laughs> me my boyfriend's on a knee with my dream ring like all <laughs> of my best friends are there crying their eyes out like yeah. what there's just yeah. so much to take in so to be able to reflect and look back at that video mm. is like yeah. every time yeah. i watch it i'm like oh there's like another thing that i'm like yeah. get to notice but, um, but no, I digress. So like, yeah. So that <laughs> going back, um, what I was most nervous about was making sure that was all. Of course. All, yeah. You know what I mean? Like that was the thing. I was like, you know, my perfectionist side came out. And, you know, I spent months and months working on this. Just want to make sure it's sweet. So. Yeah, I think but, um, Michelle. That was a bit of a love hate relationship. <laughs> <laughs> Me and her would have Zoom calls, Facetimes. Like this is like um, proposal coordinator. Um, we literally had fa- Facetimes and Zooms like every couple of days. And it was just like, she'd be like, Zach, I can punch you right now. For like all the stuff I requested, I was like, hey, I don't like the color of this um, this wood on this. Um, yeah. Movie. Can you please change that? And we're going through so many different types of wood for like the dining table set. I was, I was fucking so, so particular. So particular. Yeah. So much. You are. You're like, a particular man. Can you send oh. me like five different napkin c- colors? And so we had like, it was like tan, burnt orange. <laughs> that was like so many things. And, like, and I'm like, no, nah, let's not. Even with like the van and thing, like choosing things for mm. the van, he'll like ask my opinion. And I'm like, why do you even ask me? Because you're going <laughs> to go back and change it 12 yeah. times until it's the right thing for you. Yeah. So we know him well enough. When we get to the wedding organization, I think I'm just going to take a step back and let him do his thing. Yeah. Hey, as I say, in the end, love wins. <laughs> All righty. Brief intermission because we're back for the part of the podcast, which forms... A beautiful conclusion to the full episode. 
or it sets as an amazing trailer for those of you who might be hearing five questions and five answers separately. I love this part of the podcast because I think it gives such a it gives a very brief overview to the the guests in this occasion that we have on and I think it leaves you with some really meaningful messages and moments to draw back on and um, you know I, I know I always go to five questions and five answers when I want to remember what I've spoken about with a guest and just reabsorb that information. So I'm going to hit you both with these questions. I'll let you answer and have your own answers, maybe some of the same and you can allude to that. But I guess we'll start off with you, Stolzy. Question number one. And I forgot question number one on my last podcast and the guest reminded me. <laughs> um, <laughs> it happens. It happens to the best of us. Question number one is, what's a book or a podcast, if you could only recommend one, that you'd recommend to the audience? Oh, my God. I listen to so many. Um, I feel like, oh, it depends if you want like self-help or a laugh. Can I give one for both? Yeah, go for it. Do I have to name a particular, like, specific episode? Or no, just, just, just in general. Um, definitely Jay Shetty. I feel like he's got mm. something for literally anybody and everyone. Mm. And then that's for your self-help. And then for a laugh, Happy Hour with Lucy and Nikki. I like it. That's a diverse answer. I like yeah. that. Bid, yourself? Um, okay, book first. Probably. Oh, was it? Am I supposed to do a book as well? No, nah, either. Book or, book either. or a podcast, oh. but... Probably, and it's not really a book itself, or it is a book, but it's not like a standard book. So it's um, Momentary Happiness by Charlotte Freeman. Oh, yeah. So I remember you were buzzing yeah, on this for a minute. Like, yeah. Through and yeah, yeah. It's just got some really cool things. It's like if you've got like literally two seconds, three seconds, yeah. I've got a train or whatever it may be, just flick through. I was sort of reading one page a day, just so I really absorbed it and took it in and saw how it impacted that day-to-day life sort of thing and if I could implement it anywhere or if there was any positives. So yep. I thought that was really cool. Mm. Um, and podcast, I'm going to go way back, and I've said this so many times, and it's so old now, but it's great. Um, what really was the main thing, that, well, one of the main things that really got me out when I was at my lowest it was probably Project Mindset. Yeah. Um, mm. So it was, um, it was actually um, Kebion, it was actually yeah. in the Sturt event. It was actually, um, it was a real estate agent, but he guessed that he gets on, he targets the seven equities. Uh, so mindset uh, or hustle, um, everything. And basically, um, it's just really, really good because his guests are so fantastic and that I still go back and listen to that today. And I'll yeah. listen to it like six, seven times. Yeah, I still, you find your favourite. I would still go back right and re-listen. Like Jay Shetty, fantastic. Um, you've got um, The Imperfects, great. Hugh Van Cullenberg. Yeah, it's one way like it. I, minute, right? I could listen to Hugh chat day in day out and yeah i'm the biggest hugh nut hugger yeah, eh? we spoke about this the other day like hugh himself like he seems like one of the greatest guys you were here but um you know he's just so easy to listen to and even though he's speaking like ability is not the someone that you'd see on like a you know he's a guest speaker that, he's a normal dude he's a normal like guy. he's, he's been a teacher thing. he's got a family he's he feels yeah. in touch he is, which is the thing. Very in touch. He's very, very calming and easy mm. to listen to. So if you're stressed out, if you're anxious, if you're whatever, throw him on and it's huge. Yeah, it's amazing. Great. You can't go wrong. I love it. Mm. We'll skip to number two. Number two is, Stelzy, once again, we'll kick off with you. A skill you'd recommend mastering that significantly improves your life. Skill or attribute, we'll say. Um, is self-love one? Of course. Yeah, I feel like... If you, like, how can you expect anybody else to love you if you can't love yourself? And Mm. going back to what Zach said before about love being that kind of middle ground for so many things in your life, I think, yeah, like, you need to be able to love yourself and be happy with you to enjoy and, like, yeah. I'll speak on that and and because I know exactly what you mean. I think that, that right now... And the idea of being present are probably the things that I have to work on the most. Mm. And I think it's something that so many people have to work on. Well, everybody needs to work on it, but it's not something that you work on it and it's done. It's like, it's constant. You have to continue to work on yourself forever. Like, Well, I think you can fool yourself to think that employing self-love once or twice means that you're going to have it forever. Mm. And then it just takes a little situation that flips that on its head and maybe makes you reflect on yourself or 
we sort of spot mm. spotlight you and your actions yeah and that can crumble pretty quickly so you, mm. you're right it is a a definite it's a journey it's a quest mm. it's open it's open-ended you have to always work on it and be willing to put the time and effort into mm. loving yourself mm. great point bit great um yeah on, the, on that as well on Stella's thing just being able to be by yourself and be comfortable yeah. by yourself so yeah. um, not needing others around to feel um accepted to feel okay like to be able to be at your happiest by yourself um, mm. Not in an introverted way, but just being able to literally feel yeah. comfortable getting a coffee by yourself, go for a walk by yourself, doing whatever by yourself. I think that's huge. For sure. Because if you can deal with life's problems yourself, then you can get through anything. You shouldn't have to rely on, on, on mm. other people or you know, medication or whatever to get through stuff. If you can get through stuff yourself first yeah. before tackling those, you'll be sweet. That's, it, a yeah. that's something I've been thinking a lot about lately is I think someone who... I find that when I have a question mm. and I'm seeking an answer, to be more mindful to sit with myself mm. and ask myself mm. why I'm feeling that way, what I want from this situation, what's the right decision for me. Because I think in life, and it's, you know, we talk about it all the time in mental health, it's so important to feel as though you can speak to others and it's mm. so important to reach out and ask for help when you need it. Mm. But I think we've gotten so focused on that that in areas of our life where it doesn't mentally inf- affect us or impact us, it's just moments, mm. Mm. moments that we need to get through and work through, we don't actually come back to ourselves. Mm. Yeah. And I think for a lot of the time it leads to people, I know it has done for me, it leads to almost a little bit of resentment where you think, far out, why did I listen to that person's advice? Mm. Because also, I didn't do what I wanted to do or what I needed to do. Yeah, and also dependency, man. If you're, if you're obviously going yeah. to everyone else yeah. to seek advice, to seek help and that, and you don't tackle it yourself first, then when you come to a problem where you can't have access to friends or books or podcasts or whatever, mm. anything else, you've only got you. Yeah. So you need to it's be able to sure you can handle that yourself. So, you know, you feel confident in any situation. But another thing, another one which I was actually going to say first, and you can obviously attest to this more than anyone, um, is the ability to um, talk and storytell and be able just yeah. to be able to hold your own and be able to have a conversation and really feel confident when you're speaking. I For think sure. that's absolutely huge. You can it's a huge asset. Life if you got that. I think that's something I'm still working yeah. on. <laughs> but I think again, that... You just turned 22. That's the like, thing. Like, I, I feel like it, at this point in my life now at 26, I'm better at it than I ever have been. Yeah. And I'm, I remember at 20, because I'm a confident guy when it comes to conversation yeah. and storytelling... I remember mm. I used to think I had it all together. I was like, oh, I was, I'm was, i so good at speaking. Yeah. You yeah. know, me just in my own head talking <laughs> myself up. But I look at myself now and I look in reflection of where I was at that point in time and I've learned so much. Mm. And I yeah. think that's the thing. You're always developing that skill when you're working at it and mm. you guys are going to have a great opportunity yeah. to do yeah, that on the road. Yeah. Yeah. It'll, yeah. yeah. It'll be crazy. Be like, come back and be like, oh my gosh. Like, and mm. to reflect and listen back to this podcast in a year yeah 100 yeah. percent. yeah the third question one of my favorites of the five is the biggest challenge you've faced that has required the most resilience and growth to overcome oh. can it be one that we haven't overcome yet that we're still going of course yeah, okay. like the right repeat the question so the the greatest challenge you've faced or overcome that's required the most resilience or growth <laughs> oh, don't cut that out please yeah. um oh, i've got two that come to mind i don't know how deep we want to get as deep as you like probably can i say both of them like, of course you can i'd Go. say the first is and it kind of comes down to like addiction is i struggle with an eating disorder so yeah struggled with that for like six seven years and overcoming that i kind of thought oh i'll overcome it and that'll be it it'll be gone won't have to think about it again but it's a constant thing like yeah you have your good months and you barely think about it but then you're always going to have it's not something that just leaves and disappears forever once you've kind of worked on it. it it comes up often in life or when you're struggling or when you're going through pain it's like often that thing that you turn to to control so that has been a massive hurdle to overcome and yeah it's taken a lot of 
resilience. Mm. <laughs> um, and the second would be having one of my best friends had an accident recently and yeah, s- sitting next to her in a hospital room contemplating whether she was going to make it or not having to pour 110 percent of your energy into like pouring into love into that room and being positive and just trying to give her the best possible outcome that you can kind of try to give but also putting 110 percent into being realistic and not getting your hopes up was so Mm. draining and to see not know for so long how it like if she was going to be okay and seeing the impact that has on the people and relationships you have around you like yeah that was hard <laughs> well i can say from the outside looking in and from speaking to you guys every day you've done an amazing job as a friend in that situation and <laughs> you, you've done so well and yeah. and also with the eating disorder i feel like that there'll be so many people listening to this mm-hmm. who can relate to that and probably link then your answer to question two with that, that there yeah. that journey of constant mm-hmm. self-love yeah. and yeah so you're doing amazing, Stelzy. Mm. And I feel like I should quickly, side note, yeah. I keep going to you, Zach, and saying bids for people going, what the fuck is he talking about? That's what we call Zach, so yeah. bids. So <laughs> no, hopefully that makes some sense. That. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I guess I'll be quick, but three potentially. So one is um, a perfectionist side dealing with, no, dealing with not... You know, because especially being on the road, and Stelz has brought up this point many times, is I'm not going to be able to, like, redo things or go over stuff. Like, being okay with not having the most perfect video on YouTube for the first episode, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. just being more, um, yeah. being more accepting of just being a bit um, raw with a lot of stuff. Definitely. Which I, I think, sorry, to quickly add on, I think that, like, something that I've learned over the years of working on social media is your audience actually appreciates that a lot more than seeing a saturated, mm. perfect life. Like yeah, they want to see. Yeah, definitely. Your, but, yeah. Yeah. I think I've always just been, I think it may have stemmed from when I used to do you know, speeches at school or whatever. I used to probably practice my speech on palm cards over 50, 60, 70 times in front of a mirror <laughs> um, before I did my speech. And I used to like work on it so hard that I would have like little lines going up where my tone should have risen, where it oh should have dropped. God. Like my tonality, so, so I used to be able to go and do a speech at school and just nail it stuff about mm. like I'd just been saying it, but I just rehearsed so hard. Oh my so, you know, when I've got that drilled into me sort of thing and then I go and do something on camera or whatever, I'm just kind of like, I could have said that better, I could have yeah. done that better, I could have mm. done whatever. So in my head, I'm like, I'm not giving the audience the best of what I can do. You're I'm truly only, your I'm own worst critic. I'm only giving yeah. them, you know, half of what I'm capable of. So it's being accepting of that going, you know, I could have done better. I could have done better. Like I'm, not, I'm a competitive person. Yeah. And, I'm, and it's not that I'm competing with anyone out there. It's just that I'm competing with myself. Mm. Yeah, wanting to, you know, be okay with that. So I think that's a big thing that I'm coming to face. Um, you know, the one's probably speaking on camera. Um, I want to, once again, going back in the perfection aside, just want to be better. Of course. Um, and uh, another one overall is probably just being, learning to just trust again. That's probably mm. something that, you know, um, it's been a thing that I thought I'd gotten through, but, um, you know, it's, it's like, like Stella said, things can repop back up again. And it's just sort of being, you know, um, just learning to really feel like having the same trust as I did before got into like a first relationship, if you know what I mean. Yeah, it's of just course. Being, just being able to have that complete and out of trust which is yeah it's something that sort of just you know takes time but mm. of course it does i think like in adding on there again like life does present moments throughout time for you to like where those whatever it is mm. trust for instance it gives you an opportunity that like that's life trying to give you an opportunity to work on those things and yeah. be like oh hey actually we can Definitely. work on this more and so, i think if i can um, obviously not being within your relationship, but you two are like kind of the perfect <coughs> people for each other's past challenges. Like mm. I feel like I see that in yourselves where the past challenges you face and, and I know what you speak of there, Bid, yeah. you know, some you stuff know, in the past, yeah, you know, that that is yeah. difficult to overcome and you guys yeah. are in a great opportunity to work through these things together and you have amazing people around you. So 
I've got no yeah. doubt that they will not be present challenges, but ones of the past yeah. Um, yeah. in good time. Whilst, yeah. like we said, whilst we said, always things will come up that, yeah. that yeah. require so that. And, of yeah. course. And like in being in a relationship, you're signing up for the other person's shit and mm. <laughs> supporting them through their stuff and mm. vice versa. Definitely. Definitely. The fourth question is... That was, we just that done was, the third the question. Yes, didn't we? The fourth. The fourth question. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want me to host that? Yeah, if you can. Chuck some light. Uh-huh. Right? The, the habit or ritual that's formed a part of your morning or evening routine that sets your life up for success. Mm. Do you want to go first? There you go. Stick to the stick to Look, in an ideal, wait, so my whole routine or? Um, just like something that's step. formed. Yeah, so. routine. That's just, at you know, night, Dom. <laughs> just like a morning or an evening ritual slash routine that you feel sets you up for success. For I example, think. for me, like getting up and exercising early is a mm. huge part of the success of my day. Yeah, I feel like waking up before the sun's risen to exercise and then watching the sunrise mm. is like if I've gotten both of those things in, I'm like, okay, I can so much more productive with the day and so feel so much more positive yeah. for yeah. sure and you've gotten those things out mm. of the way before seven thirty, and it's like oh my gosh i've got the whole day to focus on mm. everything of course to be done yeah something that um i mean i've been lacking a lot lately on it, but like like stella said it's um you know like and like you can attest to as well bro like our morning walks mm. um, getting the mind working with deep conversations early on yeah the coffee just literally sitting there and like ha- like hammering into those deep conversations at 6 a.m mm. really sets you up for the whole day and then jumping in the ocean gives you that body that bloody refresher sure. like it's better than yeah. half the coffees you have out there mm-hmm. yeah wake you up so i mean like you know doing those three things before like you used to finish like 7 30 and, yeah, yeah. An and you feel amazing to go to work yeah. or whatever yeah. so that's huge um and as simple as it may be um what helps me relieve stress in that is just writing a to-do list yeah like it's so simple but yeah. like literally getting my notes out and going this is what i've got on today so that i know that's all i have to do because i think the biggest thing that causes stress is i've got so much in my head and i'm so overwhelmed is there anything i'm missing am i forgetting mm. something is there something i haven't attacked yeah so I'm, I'm big with that to-do too list. that's something that used to help me a lot when i was in the corporate environment of real estate yeah. like and i do it now Every time mm. I've got to sit in front of the laptop and do stuff is just write a to-do list, check it off. You know, yeah. McConaughey talks about that yeah. in his book, right? Like yeah. even just writing the most simple mundane simple. things. Oh, like, literally yeah. like wake up, yeah. wash your face and checking it off is like that boost of like oh, serotonin. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's also looking at what's <laughs> um, the next five minutes in front of you. It's another big thing, another little tip to relieve stress and anxiety is don't think about everything in a whole picture yeah. book. And I say this time and time again. Look at what is happening in the next five minutes of your life. What do you got to do? I literally have to go put this cup in the sink. I'm done. That's that's the yeah. only task I really got to do. You simplify. I mean? So simplify. That's all you got to do. No, go tick that off. Then what are you doing for the next five minutes? Great. Hit that. Yeah. Like it doesn't have to be five, yeah, or 10, 20, whatever it may be. But you know what I mean. Just really simplifying everything and just looking at the small things, not the bigger picture. Mm. Going, I've got forty-seven tasks to do. Where do I start? What do I do? It's so overwhelming. You just put more pressure on yourself. Yeah. Of course. I feel like something I like to do with my to-do list and I've just started doing this is like on Sunday writing out, okay, I've got the biggest to-do mm. list. I write it out in columns, like five minute, like less than five minute, more than five minute urgent oh, yeah. and mm. then yeah. your bills and expenses that have got to come yeah. out. And then I like put my little five minute ones at the top of each day so that I'm accomplishing something. Yeah, and amazing. Then you give yourself a couple of longer ones, and anything that doesn't mm. get done, roll it over to the next week. Yeah. I like that. And then, yeah, that's good because it's like when you're playing like piano or learning an instrument as well. Like you don't just go, "Hey, play the full song." Yeah. You go, "Okay, let's learn the first." Break it up in parts. Yeah. That's, then then we'll move and learn the first line. Mm. Yeah. And then you go learn the next line, and you keep going through, and you're like just on the right hand first and the left hand. Like you know what I mean? Mm. So. Yeah. Yeah. I missed piano lessons as a kid, so I <laughs> can't relate to that one. Yeah. The last question, for me, the most profound moment and an incredible opportunity for every guest that comes on the podcast mm. is one message that if you could encourage the world to act on it, you'd like to share with them. Oh, that's a big question. Oh, you go Can first. I, I need some time to think. All right. um, well, mine's plain as day. 
um, after everything we spoke about, but it's be express gratitude when you feel it for another person. That's, that's it. Mm. I love um, it. And that's, and that's so profound. It it's simple, but it's profound. It's profound. Like whether it's a, you know, coffee, phone call, text, whatever it may be, just do it. And you got to, you know, if you're someone that feels very uncomfortable and don't open up quite often or you feel a bit of discomfort with, with expressing yourself like that, just ask yourself what's more important you not feeling awkward for 10 seconds in a day or putting a massive smile and making your mates yeah. day yeah i yeah. feel like mine's already done okay, sure. you want me to cut you off all right you can jump in <laughs> um i feel like probably like quite similar to that is you just like be kind to everyone you never know what's going on behind closed doors and it costs you nothing to be nice that's it you know it's one thing I, I talk about a lot my pop always said it to my dad and my dad's always said it to me it doesn't hurt to be nice to people and it makes you feel good too. It, it does it really does and I think you know for me I know that when I express gratitude yeah. not just when I feel it but when I express yeah. it as you say it makes not only that person feel amazing mm -hmm. but it makes you feel mm -hmm. incredible yeah. so as an expression of gratitude to you both I want to say thank you so much for not coming on the show. Forget all of that. This is a small piece of the puzzle of our our friendship and the connection that I have with you both. I love you guys dearly. I'm so thank excited you, for this journey that you're about to go on. Actually, we'll call it a quest because it is so <laughs> open-ended and I think it is the beginning of a long, incredible life that you two have together and I think a legacy that you guys will leave for the type of human beings you are and the the way that you've touched people and, and improved people's lives. So I'm just so excited for you. I, I feel blessed to be um, a friend and someone who gets to follow along on this journey because you are two of the best people I know. And yeah, I'm just very excited for your futures. No, I appreciate that, brother. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for having us on. Yeah. It was, um, Absolute pleasure. I feel like we have these chats <laughs> every yeah. day. Every it was day. good to finally sit down and, and you know, throw it all together. Yeah. And Put a memory card yeah. in the machine yeah. <laughs> and store this one. That's yeah. it. That's thank it, brother. So thank you. Absolute yeah. pleasure. For everyone listening, watching, love you guys dearly. Thank you for <laughs> taking the time to tune in to a lot to talk about, getting around the guests that we have on the show. Please make sure that you go ahead, follow these guys on socials and follow the Project of Happiness journey. Cop some merch, share some gratitude, do all the good things that you need to be doing to be a part of their journey. Um, all of the links and social tags will be in the show notes. Um, so from me to you, thank you for being a part of the audience and we'll catch you at the next one.